Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video and in today's video, we're gonna talk about AWS certification. This video is divided into three parts. The first part is all about giving you the basics of what certification should you go for first, a little bit brief overview of certification and specialty exam in case you are planning and want to have an overall overview because their names are almost same and it can be confusing for beginners. Now in the second part, I'll give you my personal opinions about uh, how you should prepare in case you are going for certification or maybe even a job for a cloud-based role. And in the part three, I'll tell you a small trick that I learned while taking the interview because before I was about to leave the company, I had to actually hand over all the responsibility to a new candidate. I took the interview of this candidate and there was a nice real trick that he showed me regarding the certification to save some money. I'm gonna share it with all of you, so probably this can help all of the community as well. So with this, I hope you are excited for this small video on AWS certification and it might help you a little bit. Let's get started with this. So AWS certification are really popular and is considered as a start or an entry point in the gateway of the cloud world. But before you get started, here is a nice and really important thing that you should really know. Cloud is nothing but just a computer sitting somewhere else. And this computer, there are high chances it is running Linux. So the more foundation of your Linux are clear, the better you're gonna feel there and you're gonna be much more comfortable with that. In case you are not that much comfortable with Linux, it is not a wise idea to go for cloud first and not having your basics of Linux clear. In case you want to clear those basics, go to blog.learncodeonline. It's a free ad-free series article series available there. So go ahead, brush up your Linux basics first. Now moving on the certification. Now it is recommended usually by the entire community and the AWS as well that the first certification that you go for is the foundation level, which is known as CCP or Certified Cloud Practitioner. Now this certification is moreover about a broader view of what AWS is and what it offers. This certification is not gonna give you much of the hands-on experience, but rather like a salesperson experience so that you can tell what services are available and why or what they are being used for. So this is the basic foundation level. Can you skip the foundation level? Absolutely, you can skip that certificate. It is not compulsory to do this first. There is no order in the certificate, but it will give you just the basic idea. Moving on, the next level of certificates are associate level. This actually brings you three major categories. The first one is focused on architect. The second one is focused on developers. And the third one is on the sysops. Now, don't get scared. Uh, none of these exams actually ask you to do anything in the real world, but rather gives you the MCQs and these all associates are scenario-based MCQs. In these scenario-based questions, you are provided with a scenario. There are four choices usually, and you have to pick one which is gonna do the job uh, better. And rest of the three are usually the wrong choices, so you can eliminate them out. Now these associate level exam, in case you want to go for architecture level, that's gonna focus more on designing a resilient system which is durable and is available high availability. So you will be focusing more on the infrastructure and creating of that. In case you want to prepare for the developer exam, that's gonna help you to prepare more about how a developer workflow and what a developer should know about. Again, there is no programming requirement in any of them, but developer actually orients a little bit more about uh, Beanstalk and CI CD pipeline setups and stuff like that. So that's gonna be a little bit more. Similarly for the sysops as well. So you can prepare for these, any of these exams directly. And the good thing is that all of these three exams share a whole lot of their curriculum with each other, like 60 to 70%. So in case you have prepared for architecture and you know all these topics, you have experience with them, preparing for developer exam or the sysop exams is gonna be comparatively easy. Now moving on to the next level, which is the professional level. In the professional level, AWS has two exams. The first one is architect, the second one is the DevOps. Now, these are a little bit more tricky, not little, I would say a whole lot more tricky. And I don't recommend anybody to just directly walk into the exam until unless you have some few years of hands-on experience of working in these corporate. But again, you can actually prepare directly for these exams as well. In case you have great experience in AWS, you have been working for a while, it's not gonna make sense for you much to prepare for the associate level. You're gonna feel like, hey, this is a kid's play. Moving into the professional makes much more sense. In the professional level, it's a really tricky. Entire paragraph is given to in the questions and you have to prepare a scenario, like what's going to be the best for this company. And the worst part is that out of these four uh, choices that are given to you, majority of the time, two choices are correct. 
you have to figure out what is the best practice and recommendation by AWS to choose one. So having more than one correct choice, almost kind of a correct choice is really a difficult one. And that's what makes this exam a little bit tricky. And I have seen professionals preparing directly for it. Uh, one of my senior is actually preparing for that in for which I was working for it. So it's actually doable uh, directly too. Do I recommend directly to prepare for this one? That's gonna come up in the second part of the video. So we will have a talk on this one and entire in depth. So a little patience here. Moving on the specialty exam. Now, majority of the videos or people talking about actually take this specialty topic at the very end. And that's why sometimes it becomes a myth that you have to go through the CCP and then the associate, then professional, and then you can go for the specialty exam. Absolutely wrong. It, this is not how it works. Now, all the exams that we have talked so far are actually very widened exam. And not all the people have this kind of a wide experience or knowledge or a hands-on experience for these things. Majority of the time you are working for a company for who is focusing more on web devs. So you manage services like databases and some EC2 instances and Beanstalk. So your area of expertise usually is limited to that area. If a company is working more on machine learning, your area of specialty actually specializes there. Now these specialty exam that you can see up there, they can be prepared directly to. And I found them much more better in case you want to enhance your knowledge. Let's just say there is one exam which is focused much more on database. So it makes sense for a whole lot of developers or maybe people who wants to get some certification that pick up the specialty exam it's going to serve you better because you will have an in-depth knowledge about AWS and database and related uh, technologies. So you can prepare directly for a specialty exam. You don't need to wait for clearing up all these exams. Start preparing for them directly sometimes makes sense. Okay, so moving on. My personal thoughts on preparing for AWS exams is really simple. Now first, coming up onto the foundation level. Now foundation level exam include just the CCP. I personally would skip this any day and I would recommend most of the people to skip this one. Now this foundation CCP exam is focused majorly on to make you kind of a salesperson for AWS. You know a lot about AWS. It's like a bird's eye view, but knowing these much of the technology sometimes doesn't make sense to me. You will eventually learn a whole lot of them while preparing for the associate level exams as well. So just because people are scared a little bit to move into the cloud territory, this exam can give you a fearless entry and a confidence as well. That's where it serves the most. But I don't recommend most people to actually prepare for this one. I would directly say that, hey, in case you want to prepare for exam, you got the money and you have your mindset to go just for exams, uh, directly move on to any associate level. Moving on the associate level. Now associate level exam is very much widened too. Not just widened, it actually allows you a whole lot of opportunity to play around hands-on. Again, hands-on is not there in the exam, but it allows you the opportunity to play with some of the labs that you can create while learning and playing. Now my recommendation in case you're preparing for associate or as a cloud in general is just take a look on what the curriculum is and what are all the topics which are majorly appearing in the exam and just give an entire week. For example, if you want to prepare for IAM, don't think that I'm preparing for IAM for architect or maybe a developer or anything else. Just look for, I just want to prepare the IAM subject and just learn more about it, how groups are being created, uh, what's there in the users, how can I assign permissions, what all the permissions are there, how can I write some permissions, can I use YAML syntax, can I use JSON syntax, what these permission means, what is explicit deny, and a whole lot of things. Once you have given the entire week for just IAM, it's gonna make you much more stronger than rather than just watching some PowerPoint presentation and calling it a day. If you want to prepare for VPC, give entire week or maybe two weeks to just master the VPC, that's going to serve you well. Now surely this is going to take much more time. You won't be able to just prepare for these exams in just two months or so certainly. But this I think is a better strategy because cloud is something which you will do a lot of hands-on work and your knowledge, how much you are reading, how much you are studying, is going to come in handy. So don't just run into the race of just clearing the certificate. You really want to understand each and every topic in depth. I'll try to make an upcoming uh, video where I can give you an entire list. Like these are the preparation uh, materials and topics and how much time ideally you want to give there. Now, since a whole lot of them share the syllabus, so you will be able to prepare for them uh, side by side. So don't rush, 
try to give more time. Now, professional level exam. Now, I personally don't have much of experience and I haven't talked too much with the people and my friends about the professional level exam. So I am in no position to make a commentary on these exams. I'm pretty sure there are other people who have actually given this exam or our friends who have given these exams can actually talk more on that. Uh, so I wouldn't take much on this one. I Again, talking just about anything doesn't make sense. So I don't have experience on professional. I'll skip this one. Now, specialty exam. Now, I think these are one of my favorite ones because once you have got the basic overview and broadened idea about the AWS, specialty exams makes much more sense to me. Specialty exam, uh, probably you are already having some of the Cisco experience networking. Now you want to have an experience in the cloud as well. So go directly for the network specialty exam. And I think that's going to move you from Cisco to cloud like pretty quickly. So that is where uh, these are my favorite ones. And again, you can just directly prepare for them. No need or no prerequisites are there. Okay, moving on to the third section, which is going to share a little bit uh, interview experience. So uh, we have done all the entirety work that was assigned to me for the AWS. In case you haven't watched the previous video, I discussed a little bit on that. So in the last job, uh, it was a whole lot of experience for me. But before leaving that job, I said uh, that now this is all enough. Now I would like to make sure that you relieve me. And they said, hey, Tej, we are happy to have your services. And in case you don't want to continue, that's fine. But can you take some interviews for us and can have can give us potential candidate? So these candidates were actually being filtered already once and then the second interview was on me. Now I I was really simple in the interview process. I directly take them onto IAM. I gave them an account of AWS that, hey, this is your account and this is what I want you to do. I gave them a diagram that this is the infra that I want you to prepare and just start directly preparing. Deliberately, I gave them less permission in their account and a whole lot of them got stuck there. In case they don't know about these permissions and stuff, I was sure that we cannot proceed with the person or the candidate. One of that person actually directly got me and he said, hey, uh, my account is having less permission. Can you improve or increase my permission on this particular thing? I said, okay, this guy caught me there. I think we can move on more for talk on, on this. He actually did a pretty good job in the diagram which I gave to him uh, for preparing the infra. He nailed it down actually, to be honest. And then, uh, during the talk and knowing more about like how many uh, times you have done with the cloud formation and stuff and stuff like that, he shared a very interesting thing. He said that I do have my uh, exam. I have given my AWS exam. I said, okay, where is the certificate or didn't you didn't clear that? He said, no, I gave the practice exam and I have scored this much. He scored really high in that. And he said, I didn't have too much money with me to give or invest like $176, but I had $23. So I booked a practice exam and here's my practice exam and you have already seen my practical skills. That got me really impressed. And this is a really nice trick. So in case you are short on money and you don't want to spend like $176, prepare for just the practice exam at just $20 plus taxes, so $23. And you can give the practice exam in case you score really well in that. You can just mention them uh, in the verbally uh, with the interviewer that, yes, I am capable of clearing the certificate, but I don't have the money. He said, once I get this job, after just a couple of months, I'm going to give the exam because I know I can do it. And I think this is worth sharing with you. You can save some money uh, just with the practical knowledge and a little bit of the practice exam. That was quite interesting to have that. So this is all about uh, the brief overview in case you are planning to go for AWS certification. And surely I'll come up with more videos, some practical guides, some tricks and tricks about uh, Jenkins and all the setup that we did on that company. I think that's going to help you a lot to learn more on the AWS. And that's pretty much it. Make sure in case this is interesting for, for you, consider hitting the subscribe button. In case you are not considering it, that's fine too. We can still be friends and I'm going to catch you up in the next video. Perdí el instinto, nos decía Que esa noche juntico no quería Que la ganas bebé nos ganaría Pero no fue así Vamos lenta, ya yeah. Que si nos apuramos nos disfrutamos del de momento, ya yeah. Y lo vamos